Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to a brand new video. And today, I'm going to be bringing you the first post NBA draft lottery mock draft. And this is the first one I'm going to be doing here on the channel post the lottery. Uh, we just wrapped up about an hour ago, uh, less than that. And the San Antonio Spurs lucked out with the draft odds to Victor Wenbanyama. I'm over here on Fanspo. I put the draft order in, as you can see here. Spurs, Hornets, Blazers, Rockets, Pistons is your top five. We are only going to be selecting the lottery today. So if you would like to see uh, another future draft where I do the entire first round or even the entire draft uh, with trades, without trades, just let me know down in the comments below. But let's waste no more time and let's hop right into this right now. Undisputedly, the San Antonio Spurs are going to select Victor Wembanyama, seven foot five center out of France. Uh, this kid is a unicorn for just over 22 points a game. Uh, in his season over in France, 10 rebounds a game, just under three shots blocked per game, which is so impressive for a 19 year old with his size, only 220 pounds, which is incredible for the size uh, of the player that he is being a seven foot five player. There are obviously size concerns when it comes to that. Uh, similarly to what we saw last year with Chet Holmgren. However, I do think Victor Wembanyama is going to pan out really well as a spur. You have guys already on that team like Jeremy Sohan. You have Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, and now Co Coach Popovich is never going to end up retiring when you got a guy like Victor Wembanyama here. Tim Duncan being the last number one overall drafted player. Uh, to the San Antonio Spurs. We'll see if he can pan out there. But I think this is just a huge, you add a cornerstone guy to your team, player that you've never seen before uh, being drafted into the NBA. I think he's going to make an immediate impact. Um, and him just matching up against other centers in this league is going to be super, super enticing for me to see. So without further ado, Victor Wenbenyama, you are going to be a member of the San Antonio Spurs. Now, with the how the lottery panned out i do think it's very interesting to see how some of these top picks uh and some of how these top teams end up utilizing these picks for instance the charlotte hornets here we just saw them draft lamello ball just a few seasons ago do they go another point guard and scoot henderson who is undisputedly the number one overall guard in this year's draft and I think they do, because if you can solidify your backcourt for the future with LaMelo Ball, with Scoot Henderson as two elite playmakers, both of those guys um, just add something else to this team. However, Brandon Miller being an elite scorer, an elite downhill guy, six foot eight frame, he's athletic, he can score off the dribble, which is rare for young players, 19 years old to do. Uh, coming into the NBA, I think he's going to fit in right away. Um, a lot of his off-court issues have already been resolved. I don't think that's anything that a team really has to worry about. And I think, if anything, that does mature a player of his age a lot more for the future to set himself up in the league. And I think Brandon Miller is the selection you make here for the Hornets. You already do have your star point guard. Adding another one that's also ball dominant doesn't make a whole lot of sense there. So I think Brandon Miller is the pick that you go here at number two. I do think they are going to get rid of Gordon Hayward in this offseason somehow, or at least try to get off some of that contract. We're not even playing um, because I think you're going to want to go to youth. You're going to have LaMelo Ball. It'll be interesting to see what Terry Rozier ends up doing this offseason. you got guys like Mark Williams who came in. Kelly Oubre is still a good piece uh, for this team. So Brandon Miller, I think, is the best selection to hear uh, for the Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan, get it done. This overall pick, we have... Another weird scenario, Portland Trailblazers jump up to number three in this year's draft. They still have Damian Lillard on this team, Jeremy Grant's on this team, Nurkic, Anthony Simons. So you wonder how did they end up with this third overall pick? They just got unlucky with injuries. They weren't a very talented team last year. And I think this third overall pick is huge for them, not necessarily to draft players, um, but to use as a trade asset. Now, for instance, I do think they could go out and use this third pick to try to pair up star player with Damian Lillard because at three, you're guaranteed either Scoot Henderson or Brandon Miller, and that's a game changer for one of these younger teams that has assets to trade away to a team like the Portland Trailblazers here. For, for a team like the Blazers to pass up on a potential superstar, um, dealing with this number three overall pick is going to be very interesting. However, I don't see a scenario where they do take any of these guys with the three spot. You don't need another point guard. You already have Anthony Simons and Damian Lillard for your future. Scoot Henderson, what sense does this make for you? So 
right now I'm gonna end up trading this pick with the Portland Trailblazers and I think a team that's gonna be very interested uh, into trading into that top three there's teams like the Jazz but I think the better team is gonna be the Toronto Raptors now I think there's gonna be a trade centered around Pascal Siakam to the Portland Trailblazers I think you get a solidified star in Siakam the Raptors who did not have another successful season could kind of blow it up a little bit you already have really good young talented players you have the past rookie of the year winner in Scotty Barnes so you have talent there Fred Van Vliet is another guy that I think can move over to the two so I have them making the trade surrounding the number three overall pick as well as Pascal Siakam so now with the Raptors on the clock at three I do have them taking Scoot Henderson six for two explosive guard reminds me a lot of John Morant Russell Westbrook he could pass the ball really well and being able to add to a Portland or not excuse me not Portland Joe but it's a Toronto Raptors team adds a ton of versatility Raptors go younger and they look to kind of retool and rebuild a little bit for the next couple seasons getting rid of Pascal Siakam and now your team's really going to be ran through Scoot Henderson and Scotty Barnes which is I think two really really good talented young players there for the Toronto Raptors Messiah your G there you go the Houston Rockets are in another weird situation where they've lucked out in the draft lottery the past few seasons getting top four picks in all those drafts You've already taken Jalen Green. You got Sengun on this team. You have a ton of talent um, in Houston Rockets jersey. Jabari Smith last year. And I think now is the time where you add a solidified point guard. A guy that doesn't need the ball in his hands. Who would rather facilitate uh, and set up guys like Jalen Green, Alperin Sengun, uh, Jabari Smith Jr., Jay Sean Tate, Tari Eason. And I think that is a man Thompson. The first Thompson twin, Thompson twin will be selected here with the fourth overall pick. Because I just don't think you need another scorer on this team. A sure Thompson could score the ball. Cam Whitmore could score the ball. All these guys could score the ball really well. And I think a man Thompson, wow, he can score the ball very good for his size at six or seven. Being able to play make and set up guys like Jalen Green is going to be huge for them. Being able to slow the game a little bit down now under Ime Adoka with a natural true point guard is going to be very very beneficial for them and i think that's going to allow jalen green to play more of his role instead of taking 25 shots a game 30 30 shots a game he's going to be able to slow down to still score at will he still is going to be the number one option i suppose um but it just sets up and flows a little bit better in that houston rockets fast basketball uh sort of system so i do think amen thompson is going to be drafted here with the fourth overall pick and then at five, the Detroit Pistons. I'm sorry if you're Pistons fan if you're watching this video. Dropping from one to five is just so unfortunate. And in this scenario, you drop from Victor Wenbenyama to Cam Whitmore. I do think Whitmore is going to be selected with the fifth overall pick. You already have Cade Cunningham. You have Jaden Ivey. If that pans out, you have your future backcourt right there. You still have solid players. I mean, you have a top, you have a top overall guy in James Wiseman a few years back who has been playing fairly decent in the Pistons uniform. Um, you have Marvin Bagley still, Isaiah Stewart, Jalen Duran. You have a ton of size there. You don't have a lot of scoring, though. And I think Cam Whitmore will be a perfect guy. Comes in the NBA ready, slows the game down, could score off the dribble, gets to the free throw in a little bit. He's not super elite at getting to the line, but if he can develop that trait in the NBA, he's going to be a stud. He's a guy that you're looking at could score 15-plus immediately in the league uh, his rookie season. Cam Whitmore is going to be a guy coming out of Nova. He's really well coached and going into a Pistons organization can really just be um, not necessarily a season changer or a franchise turnaround player, but he's going to be a glue guy. He could be in the league for 10 plus seasons, just always get you a bucket when needed, play a little bit of defense. Um, Cam Whitmore is going to be a really good, solid glue guy there for the Pistons at five. Not the not he's not the star player, he's not the flashy player that a lot of players want, but Cam Whitmore is a guy that every NBA team could want to have on their roster. With the six overall selection here, I have the Orlando Magic selecting Asura Thompson, the other Thompson twin, the better scorer, the better shooter, the better defender of the two. And I think adding a sore to this Orlando Magic team who just took Paolo Banker last year. You have Franz Wagner who I am super high on. You have a ton of young guards. Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Markel Folds. Adding another wing in a sore Thompson to really 
kind of give this team a more of a direction you add another score i think this is the season where they take that leap and they're trying to make the play in and a sore is another guy who you could just give the ball to ask for a bucket and he can get you that you have a ton of that on this orlando magic team and i expect a lot more with the seventh overall pick in this draft i have the indiana pacer selecting jerace walker out of houston and i think he's one of my favorite big mans outside of victor Wembanyama in this entire draft he's hands down one of the best big man defenders and being able to have such a big body frame similar to guys like Kawhi Leonard OG Ananobi adding a defensive presence next to a guy like Tyrese Halliburton Miles Turner and Buddy Heald is going to be really big for them I do think they already have a lot of their guards for their future so I think you already have a lot of your guys now you just want to add defending wings that can shoot and I think one of the underrated parts about Joyce Walker is his passing I think being able to have a guy you can find the ball down low and pass out of situations it's gonna be very beneficial for this team so Joyce Walker I think is gonna be a really good pick for the Indiana Pacers at number seven for this next pick I have the Washington Wizards selecting Carson Wallace out of Kentucky he's one of those guys that reminds me a lot of like SGA who can slow the game down and all coaches dream of having a guy like that Taking Johnny Davis last year for the uh, Washington Wizards just didn't really pan out. Obviously, yes, he still has a few more years to prove that he still could be an NBA talent. Bradley Beal and Kristaps Porzingis, Kyle Kuzma, there's guys on this team that I do think can still be really, really talented in the NBA. However, having a guy like Carson Wallace that can slow the game down, facilitate really well, score at well, get to the free throw line, get in the paint, get two feet in the paint, and just make decisions from there is able to add a little bit of pressure off Porzingis and Bradley Beal's hands. I was also debating of going Taylor Hendricks here, especially if Kyle Kuzma walks this offseason, and I think he would also be a really good fit for them. But adding a guy like Carson Wallace there for the Wizards at number 8, I think is really good value. I think Wallace is going to turn into a really good player in the NBA. He's not going to have an immediate impact, I do not think. But I think once he is able to get his role down in the NBA, he's going to be a really good guy, similar to Tyrese Maxey's role in Philadelphia, which just provides a spark. He provides a little bit of energy. And Carson Wallace, I think, is going to be a steal of a pick there uh, at number 8 for the Washington Wizards. And at number 9, I have the Utah. Utah Jazz adding a point guard next to the most improved player of the year in Larry Markinen. Yes, you do have Colin Sexton on this team, Jordan Clarkson on this team. But you do not have a true point guard, especially losing Mike Conley here. Adding Anthony Black, the guard out of Arkansas, gives you that true point guard that you need. He has really good size. He's quick on his feet, out on the perimeter, and is able to attack defender pretty much from anywhere on the floor. He's able to facilitate. He's able to find his big man. Uh, adding like playing alongside a guy like Jordan Walsh at Arkansas you play alongside of these great players uh, Nick Smith Jr. him and Anthony Black you can really debate which one goes nine but I do think Anthony Black is the more upside player you take him for his skill that he's already proved to have um, and in playing in an environment uh, like Utah is gonna be really interesting to see what he could do facilitating wise I do think Larry Markin is still gonna be very beneficial This allows Jordan Clarkson to move back to his six-man role or Colin Sexton And I think adding a true point guard to this Utah Jazz team is the step in the right direction Is he the generational cornerstone point guard for them? Not sure But I do think he is the right pick for you to make here with the ninth overall selection here with the 10th overall pick, it's the Dallas Mavericks. Yes, for those of you that have not watched basketball, the Dallas Mavericks did not even make the play-in tournament. They still do have Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic during this moment right now on May 16th. Kyrie Irving has not left the team yet. Obviously, free agency hasn't happened yet. But in this hypothetical situation, we're going to be marking it as we don't know. We don't know if he's going to return or not because genuinely, we don't know. But I do think they are going to take Grady Dick. Uh, the freshman wing score, bucket getter. He's an elite, elite score. Um, and that's about all he does. But that's what you need, especially in a team uh, like the Dallas Mavericks. You just need some scoring help around Luka Doncic. He could sit out on that wing. Luka will feed him all day. And he's going to be a really good player. He can blow by uh, a lot of elite defenders with his very first, very quick first step. Uh, Grady Dick is a type of guy that will play really good under Jason Kidd. Um, that team's going to score a lot of points, especially with Grady Dick out there. Um, but adding another guy that can really score the ball next to Luka Doncic is going to be perfect. So I do think Grady Dick is going to be a member of the Dallas Mavericks. 
I pick 11. The Orlando Magic are back up, taking a Sword Thompson at number 6. Paolo Bancara last year. I have them selecting Leonard Miller here uh, out of Canada. He's one of those international players that's lanky. He has a really, really sort of weird game. Um, and you don't know what to expect out of this guy. And that's, I think, what the Magic um, are known for. You just have guys that aren't necessarily going to go for 40 every night, but they may go 9, then 35 the next night. Leonard Miller is just an athletic freak, um, and he can shoot the ball really well. He's having a really good job uh, right now after the NBA Draft Combine, showing off his athleticism, his shooting. I can't talk right now. But Leonard Miller, I think, is one of those guys that's going to jump up in a lot of player power rankings here. And I have them, him being taken in the lottery here at pick 11. He's going to slide in next to another wing in a sore Thompson. And... I think this is one of the best steps in the right direction for the Atlanta Magic. You just add a ton of depth through this team. You don't necessarily have your superstar yet, but you have a ton, a ton of depth. And Paolo Bancaro is your player to build around. And I think Leonard Miller is going to be a guy that can complement him really, really well. With the 12th overall selection here in the draft, the Oklahoma City Thunder are up. And I think they got a dream scenario here in taking Taylor Hendricks out of UCF Hendricks is one of in a very one of the very elite defenders in this entire draft having a 6-9 frame he's able to slot in right at that four and then play next to another rookie next year in chet holmgren and i think that solidifies that perfect starting lineup for the oklahoma city thunder running either j-dub or lou door at the three having a guy like giddy or shea that are able to find hendrix who is a very good shooter for his size in the corner shot 39 percent on catch and shoot threes and able to have that score that could stretch the floor there and add a little bit more defensive help down on the blocks with Chet Holmgren. I think this is going to be a very perfect fit in Oklahoma City, and I think the Thunder get a really talented player here with the 12th overall pick, similar to what they've done in the past. Nick Collison, Steven Adams, Jalen Williams, and now Taylor Hendricks out of UCF. Up here, dropping 10 spots now, is the Portland Trailblazers after acquiring Pascal Siakam for the third overall selection uh with the toronto raptors and now we have to keep in mind that they do have pascal siakams they still have damian lord and fernie simons last year taking shannon sharp um no use of norkic because i do think he would be included in that deal just to make money work so i think here they are going to take a guard and i do think they're either going to go between uh ryan rupert or jordan hawkins and i think for, for this scenario you take a guy like rupert who is able to come into this draft and play a little bit of that G League situation, um, developing as a player similar um, to what many of teams have done in the past, kind of just send them down to the league, to the G League, allow them to develop. You have veteran guys. You have one of the best veteran uh, point guards in the entire NBA, Damian Lillard. Being able to bring in a guy that can eventually pan out and to be a backup guard, maybe even take over that role if, if this team doesn't work out with Pascal Siakam. So I do think Rupert could come in and be another good defensive playmaker uh, right behind Damian Lillard off this bench. Um, and I think this is still a very beneficial trade, being able to walk out of this draft with Pascal Siakam and double R's. Um, I would definitely take that if I'm a Blazers fan. And now with the final selection here in the lottery and in the video, I do have uh, the New Orleans Power can select in Jordan Hawkins here at 13, or excuse me, at 14, uh, adding another pure score. Uh, onto this team it was much needed especially last uh, season we just saw CJ McCollum was not reliable to score the basketball it, a, a lot of the time it really just was Brandon Ingram doing a lot of that scoring Zion Williamson is expected to be back uh, for next season however being able to have another guy like Jordan Hawkins who can come in and make an immediate impact the national champion um, it's gonna be huge for them he has a little bit of that experience uh, now playing a ton of games as a sophomore uh, in UConn um so being able to have another score into this system when ingram's not falling valanchunas you just have guys that aren't really able to score as much i think hawkins could slot in into that starting lineup especially year one depending on the injury matchups here um so yeah, i do think jordan hawkins being one of the most versatile scores and one of the most elite scores in this entire draft is going to end up falling and i think he's going to end up going to the i initially forgot to press record but i have jordan hawkins being selected with the 14th and last pick of the nba draft lottery last season we just saw that cj mccollum was not enough necessarily uh for this pelicans team making so much money uh for a score that just didn't have it you could tell the age was getting up to him and brandon ingram was just doing a lot of the work uh that second half of the season when him and zion williamson were not hurt 
Um, so adding another elite score uh, to this team out of UConn, the national champions, Jordan Hawkins could come in and just make an immediate impact. Good size reminds me a little bit of Brandon Ingram. So adding a mini Brandon Ingram next to Brandon Ingram, I think is going to be very important, especially for those nights where CJ, BI, and Zion just can't get it going. Jordan Hawkins can bring a spark. He could score from all three levels. He's efficient at doing so. And Hawkins is going to wrap up the NBA draft lottery for 2023. So that's going to wrap up the video for today. If you guys enjoyed it, please let me know um, by leaving a like on this video. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see some more videos. Uh, obviously, I didn't intend to make uh, a pick there in the top three, but I just think it makes the most sense there. Um, and if you guys would like to see an entire full first round, another mock draft um, in the future, just let me know because I'm willing to do so. I got a lot of time on my hands in the summer. Um, look forward to a lot more videos coming out uh, in the future. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave it a like. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.